Hello, my most awesome project managers. How are you doing? Welcome to Pinbot Gold. This is episode six, and we're taking a look at relationships today. We're taking a look at relationships between processes. Now, there are certain processes I would like to call out right off the bat. Our focus, as you can see, is pretty much all the knowledge areas, but I want to hone in on a few processes up front. We're going to be taking a look at Develop Project Charter and its importance how the project charter is an output of this process and where exactly it goes. You can see the project charter down there. It goes to a number of processes, and that is one of the things that I would like to show you and emphasize in this study. The project charter is a very important document. But in addition to that, I also want to point out right here some additional information. I want you to take a look at these processes in yellow. These processes in yellow are daisy-chained in a particular way that you may not have noticed in the PMBOK guide. And that's what I'm going to be showing you through this study. Okay? So, let's take a look at the very first process at the center of our discussion, right here. You can see that arrow going from Develop Project Charter giving you the project charter as an output. Now the project charter, as you have seen in other data flow videos of mine, it goes out from develop project charter and it goes to a number of places. So you can see a project charter again at the top here and look at where it's going. It is going to two places. One, we can see it going to identify stakeholders. That's a very important relationship to call out right away. And then we can also see it going to the develop project management plan process. But that's not all. I would also like to point out to you other important places that the project charter goes to. The project charter is an input to plan scope management, plan schedule management, plan cost management and plan quality management, and anywhere you've got plan X management, like plan resource management, plan communications management, plan risk management, plan procurement management, and even plan stakeholder engagement, you see the project charter go into those places. Now, you may ask the question, why does the project charter go there? Think about it. What exactly is the project charter to you as a project manager? Well, the project charter has mention of a lot of the intricacies that exist right under the very first document, high-level scope, high-level milestone schedule, high-level budgets or summary budgets and things such as that at a very high level, the funding source, things such as that. These are reasons why the project charter can be found as an input to all of these, what I call plan X management type processes, all the way on down, even all the way on down to plan stakeholder engagement and identify stakeholders Mention is always seen of the project charter, and it's for a reason, okay? So the project charter goes to all of these places, all of these planning components. Just think about it, it'll stick. Plan X management, you see the project charter going into all of those, okay? So that's the first part of what I wanted to show you. But now I want to show you how these processes, these processes of integration management, because I talk about how important integration is, I want to show you how all these processes of integration management are daisy chained, as it were. Okay, but let's start off with develop project management plan. You can see the project management plan comes out of there. And I know it goes to a bunch of other places, but I want you to begin to identify these relationships. So that first relationship, 
I know you've seen it a number of times, but I want you to think about how every process is related to the other within a knowledge area. Okay, we're dealing with knowledge area, knowledge area by knowledge area. How is direct and manage project work related to develop project management plan? This is how you need to see the PMBOK guide. Everything is interrelated. Two degrees of separation, three degrees of separation. It's up to you to find those relationships. But you should be able to find relationships between any two processes. You should be able to find that conduit that links one process to another. This is how you get proficient in these project management knowledge areas. Okay? Now, let's move on to the next one. How is direct and managed project work linked to manage project knowledge? Well, right off the bat, you can see there's a relationship here with deliverables coming out of direct and managed project work and going straight into managed project knowledge. You see that? Next in the chain, from managed project knowledge, you can see here a relationship and most folks have not taken time to look at. And I cover this in a number of videos. If you search for the videos called the Phil Matrix videos on YouTube, you'll be able to go through a number of episodes where I show you how to think about these interconnection points. To be more specific, if you wanted to take a look at this in the PMBOK guide, you can see how the lessons learned register really comes out of managed project knowledge and is a sub input to monitor and control project work. But I don't want to think about it as a sub input. I want to identify these relationships so that I understand the nuts and the bolts of the PMBOK guide. The problem is reading the PMBOK guide on the surface. You cannot afford to read it on the surface. You've got to go to the sub level. I highly recommend it. Now, while there are a number of people who would say, well, I took my PMP exam and I didn't do this or I didn't do that, I can understand your argument, but that is not a valid reason for skipping over those things. It is not a valid reason. So if you take a look at page, the page you want to be looking at in the PMBOK guide is page 105, and you want to take a look at figure 4-10. And you can see that this relationship here is valid. Okay? I know some folks say, oh, I didn't read that much, blah, blah, blah. I took the exam. That's not a wise thing to follow. Don't listen to people who said they did the barest minimum and succeeded. Because a lot of people do above and beyond that and find it hard. So you just do not know where exactly you stand until you have killed the exam. I would say do everything under the sun to assure success, okay? And that involves understanding why is deliverables an input to manage project knowledge? Why is the lessons learned register an input to monitor and control project work? And I cover a lot of this information in my classes online, like the tech camp and the micro boot camp. And all of this stuff is on pmsucceed.com. If there's a class coming up, you'll find it on pmsucceed.com. In fact, there is a class coming up on these data flows. But lessons learned register going into monitor and control project work. My question to you is why? You don't know? Read it up. Read it up. Let's take a look at another relationship here. So from monitor and control project work, did it occur to you that there is a relationship here as well in that work performance reports come out of monitor and control project work and go into perform integrated change control? Again, you need to know why, but that relationship also exists. Still in the daisy chain here, you can see that the change log, which is inconspicuously hidden on that page where you've got PICC, it comes out of there and goes into closed project or phase. And it's unfortunate, it's really unfortunate that the change log appears as a sub output because that thing needs to be out front and center of the discussion. I do not look at the change log as a mere project document update. 
That is a major document which should be shown as a major output. So the change log is a major output documented as a sub output, which I don't agree with, but it becomes an input to close project or phase for a number of valid reasons. You need to understand why is the change log going into close project or phase? You need to understand that. You see, that's the level that I recommend you get to, the sub level. You gotta dig out those relationships, my friends. That is how you can assure success. I want you to succeed. I know it's possible, but you gotta do the work. You gotta do the work. I had a student who I'll just call B for now, and B used to be quite upset that I would ask for work to be done. And for four years, four years, B refused to do the work, always citing lack of time on a calendar. And I said, look, this is going to the fourth time you're taking this thing. Your company has spent money. Aren't you fed up of having to tell the same story to your boss? Let's kill this thing once and for all. Go below the surface. Do this. Do this. Do that. Just like I did. Just like I did all of these horrendous mock exams that I didn't want to in my time. You've got you to gotta do the mock exams. You've got to go below the surface. So first time wasn't successful, neither the second time nor the third time, until this student did every single thing I had been advising. And at the end of the day, on the fourth try, three ATs. How amazing that an exam that was beating a student over the head finally succumbed to that student's punishment after everything that I've been saying to do was done. You gotta know this stuff inside out, my friends, because everyone's exam is different. No two exams are the same. You don't know which of these things I talk about is gonna face you on the exam. You don't know. So my advice, my advice, my friendly advice, I know sometimes it sounds like I'm saying the same thing, but it's because I want you to pay attention. Maybe on the seventh time I say it, you will. Go below the surface. Do not stay at the surface. Do not. Now, take a look here. Another relationship exists between your project charter going all the way down to close project or phase. Do you see that jump? Why, my friends, is the project charter an input to close project or phase? I've covered it on the channel. If you're following it closely, you'll be able to explain. So I know a lot of folks who watch this stuff think that this is just PMP exam prep, but it's not. You need to refer to the why behind these relationships, even in your real world. It will help you take something to your firm. Your project charter does need to be considered at the end of the project. It has your CSFs. It should be considered. What are CSFs? Open up the guide. Go on the project charter. You need to understand these things. Let me persuade you to open up the PMBOK guide to where the project charter is talked about under Develop Project Charter and go through those items one by one if you have not. See, a lot of folks say don't read the PMBOK guide. Read study guide X, Y, or Z. And you see, even when these students say that about the study guide I wrote, I tell them, no, that is not good advice. People should read both a study guide and the PMBOK guide. So I do not subscribe to not reading the PMBOK guide. I do not. I absolutely recommend that people read the PMBOK guide. And when you go below the surface in the guide, that's where you unravel such relationships like this one right here. You can see the project charter yet again making its way to these processes in orange under scope. Have you ever thought of the PMBOK guide like this? The project charter goes to 
not just plan scope management, but also collect requirements and define scope. These are relationships that a lot of folks do not pay attention to, get into the exam and get questions, try to make it hard for them. Don't let that happen to you. I'm hoping that this inspires you to open up the guide and begin to look for this gold, these relationships, these hidden interconnection points whether at the highest level or the lowest level. It's your friend Phil here, just trying to motivate you, trying to inspire you to open up that book, Go For Gold. See you in the next episode.